I just finished wiring up the M unit and I thought it might be helpful for you to go through it terminal by terminal and tell you which wire has to go where. If you don't know what the M unit is, it is this little device that reduces the wiring on your motorcycle to the absolute minimum. It collects all of the wiring in one spot, eliminates most of the relays that you would need for indicators and things like that. It has integrated fuses, so you don't need a separate fuse box, and it helps you to find faults in your circuits by showing you which terminal is activated with little LED lights. On the BMW, I mounted it right here underneath the tank so you can't see it on this little metal bracket. If you want to see how I've built that, I'm going to link the video right up there, but you could basically place it anywhere on your bike. The M unit has two rows of terminals that you can open by pressing the little orange button with a small screwdriver. The smaller ones are all the input terminals and the bigger side are all of the output terminals. Every now and then I'm going to pull up this page from the manual, I think it's page 21, and highlight the terminal that we're talking about so you can easily follow along. Let's start with the battery connections. For those we have three more terminals on the M unit. Let's start with this terminal right here which is labeled as BAT. That is the main power supply for the M unit and the lead that you connect to this one connects right to the positive terminal on your battery. For this connection you should use a six square millimeter wire and add a fuse into the line. Since you only need one fuse you can get away with a very very small fuse bracket and I found two viable options. The first one is this one. This is a very generic one that you can find on eBay, on Amazon. It's all over the place. It comes with two six square millimeter wires already attached on each side and uses the traditional like car style fuse that you just push in there at the top. These wires are probably not long enough for your setup, so you definitely have to extend at least one side. If you can, you can use one side to directly hook up to your battery or the M unit, and then you only have to extend the other one. For that, you can either use these crimp connectors that you crimp with pliers that look like this, or you just solder on an extension piece. The other option for the fuse bracket looks like this. It has a different style fuse in there, but the advantage is that you can add your own wires by using ring terminals. So you don't have to extend wires and you know which quality of wire you use. The last thing that we need for this connection to work are the right wire ends on the M unit side and the battery side. And since the wire is so thick, the generic crimp terminals don't really work anymore. So what I would recommend you to use instead are these tubular wire lugs. For the other side of the wire, you just need to see which terminal you need to connect it to the battery. It's probably also a M5 or M6 ring terminal. For the UltraBud that I'm using on the BMW setup, it's a M5 ring terminal. So I'm gonna use the same like here. But if you want to have the wire come down, you can also get those with a 90 degree bend. So you just have to see what fits best for your setup. The other two terminals right here are the mounting points for the M unit, but they are also the ground terminals. So if you mount the M unit to a metal bracket, it's already grounded, which means the ground runs through the metal bracket, through the frame, through the engine in this case, and then down here to the point where I connect the main battery ground and then through the main battery ground lead to the battery. But if you want to be on the safe side, then I would suggest that you add another ground lead that directly goes from the terminal that is closest to the battery to the negative terminal on the battery. That's definitely what I'm doing. And for that, I use a 1.5 square millimeter wire. Same thing, here you have a M5 ring terminal. And then on the other side, you just need to see what you need to hook it up to your battery. All right, that is all of the battery terminals done. Now let's move on and go through all of the input terminals one by one. And here it makes sense to start with the lock input because that is the one that connects to your ignition lock. And once you turn the key, that basically activates the M unit and all of the other terminals. To wire the ignition lock, we want to have the positive lead going to the battery terminal on the M unit. And then the wire that is connected to the ground terminal, that goes to the lock input terminal. And what that does, it basically allows the current to flow from the positive side of the battery to the M unit and then through the wire back to the lock. But here it stops for now because the key isn't turned and the circuit is broken. But once you turn the key, the circuit is closed and then that signal flows to the input side on the M unit and that activates the M unit. The lock that I use on the BMW has three terminals and that gives you two key positions. Some ignition locks even have four terminals and that will give you three, three key positions. And if you don't know which terminal is positive and which is ground, let me quickly show you how you can check that. We're gonna use the voltmeter, turn that on, and that is set to the continuity setting. Whenever you have continuity, so a good connection, it's gonna beep. The lock is in the off position at the moment, so there shouldn't be any connection between any of the three terminals. 
So now if we turn the key one position, we ha should have connection between two, but not all three. But if we turn it then to the second position, we have connection between these two, these two, and also these two. This one is ground, these two will be the positive terminals. Since I only need on or off on the BMW, I connected the two positive terminals into one wire that runs back to the M unit. And that basically gives me the same function with both key positions. So with that out of the way, we can now move on to the other input terminals. And what you can generally remember is that the input terminals are all connected to a button or a switch. They receive the signal and the output terminals then send that signal further to the actual device. So let's, for example, say this is my horn button, right? If I press this, the signal goes to the input side of the M unit and the M unit takes that signal and transmits it to the output terminal. And from here, it sends power to the device. So in that case, to the horn, so the horn can make a noise. If you want to furthermore reduce your wiring, you can actually use a MO button inside the handlebars. It's a little device that connects to all of your switches in the handlebars and transmits all the signals through just one wire to the M unit. But we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because I first want to go through all of the terminals and tell you what you have to connect to each if you don't use the MO button because that's just additional. It still works without the MO button. The next input terminal is the start terminal and that connects to your start button. On the BMW, it's right here, but some people like to hide it underneath the seat or wherever. It doesn't really matter because all of the buttons and the switches are built in the same way. It doesn't really matter which terminal you choose. One connects to ground and the other one goes to the input side of the M unit. The ground wire can hook up anywhere to the frame, to the ground terminals of the M unit, to the ground terminal on the battery. That doesn't matter as long as it has a good ground connection. The other wire goes into the other terminal and then to the input side on the M unit. So if you put that wire into the start input, then this becomes your start button. But let's say you would take the wire from the start input and would plug it into the horn input. Then suddenly this button would be your horn button. That's how you assign the functions to each of the buttons that you have. The next terminal is turn left and it works the same like with the start button. You want to choose which button is for your left indicators. On the BMW, it's this one right here. So we want to take the positive lead from that button and run it to the input terminal turn left right here. And the ground obviously needs to go to ground. The next terminal on the input side is turn right. On the BMW, that is this button right here. And again, you want to use the wire that doesn't go to ground and run that to this input terminal. And by the way, for all of the wires for the switches, you can go as small as 0.25 square millimeters. Next up is the horn. Same thing on the BMW, that's the top one right here. We take the wire that doesn't go to ground, run that to this input terminal. And then if you press this button, that sends the signal to the output side, activating the horn output terminal, sending power to the horn, and that makes the sound. The next terminal is for the brake switch inputs, and that's actually one of the few input terminals that I use, because you will find that with the MO button, you use almost none of the input terminals. But in this one, we actually have two wires, one coming from the front brake and one coming from the rear brake. And it's actually no problem to have two wires in the same terminal, as long as they have the same function, basically. You could also connect those two wires before and then just have one wire running into this terminal, but it works just fine like this. The brake switches work the same like the buttons, even though they are located a little bit differently and they have a little bit different terminals. In the back, for example, we have two ring terminals and in the front, we have two spade terminals. But for both, you have one wire going to ground and you can again choose where you want to locate that. For the rear brake, I'm running that up to the horn mounting point, which is one of my main frame grounds. The other wire runs from the switch then up to the M unit and plugs into the input terminal right here. The same goes for the front brake also running into the same terminal. Now moving up, the next terminal is called light and that is connected to your high beam button. On the BMW, that's right here. But with the M unit, it's actually a little bit more than just the high beam switch because if we turn the key, at first the headlight is off. So we have to press this button for the headlight to turn on. If we press the button very shortly, then the high beam flashes. If we hold it a little bit longer, it switches between low beam and high beam. And if you hold it even longer, then you can turn the headlight completely off. The next input terminal is called Linbus 
and that is where you can hook up other Moto Gadget devices to. I don't have any, so I didn't use that terminal. The next one in line is called stand, and as the name suggests, that's for your side stand. So if your motorcycle has a side stand switch, which prevents you from putting it into first gear if the side stand is out, then you want to connect that wire to this input, and again, the ground wire goes to ground. The next one is called kill and that is either for a separate kill switch but if you don't have that then your start button actually doubles as a kill switch if you press it twice that kills the bike and if you have the mo button installed then you want to connect the green wire into that terminal and that transmits all of the handlebar signals to the M unit. The last two input terminals are the auxiliary inputs AUX1 and AUX2. You would use those for any other devices that you want to control with a button or a switch. So for example let's say you want to have a USB charger on your bike but you don't always want to have it turned on then you could connect a button to the AUX1 for example and the actual USB charger would be connected to the AUX1 output and then you could control that by the push of a button. If you have a speed sensor that you want to connect to the M unit, you would connect that to the AUX2 input. With all of the input terminals done, we can move over to the other side and deal with the output terminals. And here you can remember as a general rule, you always want to connect the wire that delivers power to the device. So let's take the horn as a quick example. You have the ground wire on the horn that connects somewhere to the frame or the M unit ground or the battery, that doesn't matter. And then we have the other wire that is the 12 volt positive terminal that would run to the output horn terminal on the M unit. And if you then press the horn button, that signal gets sent to the input side, which activates the horn output terminal. And that allows current to flow through the horn, which then makes the sound. So that's the general concept. Now let's go through them one by one. The first two are called start and those are basically one terminal, but since it needs so much power, it's split into two wires. For those wires, you are supposed to use 2.5 square millimeter wire and those two run to the starter motor. If you run into the same problem like I did on the BMW, where you only have one spade terminal, then you can use one of these adapter pieces that makes one spade terminal into two. But if you can't use that on your setup, then you could also join the two wires into one bigger wire and then you would only need one connection. So now if we press the start button, that activates these two terminals and that sends power to the starter motor, which then starts the engine. That works. What I use for all the wire ends on the M unit side are Deutsch pin crimp connectors. For the bigger wires, I use the crimp connectors from the DT series. And for the smaller wires, I use the crimp connectors from the DTM series because they're easier to crimp on the smaller wires. So that's how you get, in my opinion, a relatively clean look. The next two terminals are for the indicators. The first one is for the left. The second one is for the right. And the setup is basically the same. I just plug two wires in the same terminal works great but it gets a little bit trickier because we need power to the indicators but also the signal has to go to the speedometer for the control light. But let's do the simple part first. One wire goes to the back indicator, the positive wire, and the other wire goes to the front indicator, also the positive wire. And then somewhere along there you have to splice into that wire and grab the signal from there basically and run the wire to the corresponding wire of your speedometer. For the wires going to the front indicators and all the wires going to the three in one indicators in the back, I use 0.35 square millimeter wire. Next up is the horn output and that wire connects to the 12 volt positive terminal on the horn. The other terminal on the horn is the ground, which you can connect anywhere to the frame to the M unit, to the battery. For the horn wires, I use 0.5 square millimeter wire. After the horn, we have the brake light. And even though I've installed two three-in-one indicators, which each have a brake light and a rear light, I just have one wire coming out of this terminal because I spliced them here underneath the seat. So I keep this as clean as possible and the messy part can take place somewhere where it's hidden. The next two terminals are light and high beam. Light connects to the positive headlight wire. The one that follows is high beam and that is the high beam wire for your headlight. For the high beam, we also need to splice in a small wire that then runs to the speedometer. So you have the control light lighting up. I've actually added a small 0.35 square millimeter wire into the same Deutsch pin crim connector and that runs back to the speedometer plug and from here it goes to the speedometer. For the two wires going straight to the headlight, I have used 1.5 square millimeter wire. The next terminal is called ignition and that is where you want to connect your ignition system to. That was the only terminal that I was really, really struggling with. Not so much because of the M unit but rather because of the new vape ignition system that I installed that came with a relay 
to shut off the ignition because it's a magneto-based ignition system and not a battery-based ignition system. But I didn't really know where to hook this up. So I sent my dirty an email and asked where I have to hook this wire up to. And they said that goes into the output ignition terminal. So if after this video, you still have a question where you need to hook a special wire up like this, then definitely send them an email. They're super helpful, super responsive, and that helped me out a lot. Now we have three terminals left and those are all AUX terminals. The first one is AUX1 and that is used for the rear lights. AUX2 can then be used for something that always needs power. I use that for the speedometer and the speed sensor. So the wire from here goes also to the speedometer plug. And from the speedometer plug, I have one wire going to the speed sensor and the other wire goes to the speedometer. And that's how I power those two devices. And yeah, as I've said, you can use the AUX output terminals also to power up any other devices like a USB charger, for example. And if you want to control that with a button, for example, then you use the corresponding AUX input terminal. I hope that this video helps you to wire up your own setup and it will also help with the next video that I put out where I show you exactly step by step how I wired up the M unit. My goal is to make wiring a little bit more understandable, a little bit more approachable. So if after this video you still have a question, feel free to drop it down below and I'm more than happy to help if I can. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.